All right, so today we're going to be addressing Galatians chapter 3 and 2, um, addressing Romans 3 and 4, because a lot of people have been bringing up, oh, by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. It's not about the law. All we need is faith. And if you try to justify yourself by the works of the law, you're not going to be justified. But then I will bring up, in contrary to that, like in Romans, in Romans 2.13, it says the doers of the law are justified before God. So it's like, okay, those who do the law are justified before God, but no one who does the law will be justified. And then we have in Galatians where it's talking about um, by the works of law no man shall be justified, it's by faith. And then Galatians 5, it's like, but if you break the law, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. In Galatians 5, 19 through 21. So there, there seems to be some kind of problem going on here. But here is the solution to the problem. What law are we talking about? Is this the law of Moses? Is this the moral law? Is this the priesthood laws? Is this the dietary laws? Is this the laws that make up our entire universe? What laws are we talking about? Because that's very important to understand. And because is it saying every single law, no man shall be justified? That, oh, we're just doing away with completely every single law. No, that, 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 that's not what happened. I mean, Jesus very clearly stated in Matthew 5, he did not come to abolish the law, but came to fulfill it. Yet we have in other places in scripture where it says certain parts of the law were abolished. What Jesus was referring to in Matthew 5 was that he's not abolishing the moral law. The moral law is going to stand. What it is going to abolish is the ordinances and the high priesthood laws and things uh, uh, pertaining to Moses' law. That's done away with. This is a new covenant. Yet the moral law still remains no matter what. That is God's laws to us. That's, that is, that, that, that's built into us, into our consciences. God's not saying, oh, you don't have to follow the moral law. And no, he's clearly stated in all, in Romans, in Galatians, in all these places where they say faith alone, where it says if you commit these sins, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's God's moral law. And it's never going to be abolished until everything's over, like Matthew 5 says. But Moses' law, the ordinances and other things like that, those have been done away with because we are in a new covenant. Yet God's moral law, we still need to follow. We need to still obey. If you want to believe that means God's moral law is abolished and you don't have to follow it, then it, it doesn't make sense. Because in Galatians, it says you commit these sins, you'll not inherit the kingdom of God, along with 1 Corinthians and Ephesians and the rest. And we have listed them off before in other videos. We have to obey God's moral law. That is what, what he, he didn't just say, okay, I'm doing away with the law now. If you, I'm going to tell you all these things that you need to do, but don't worry, you don't have to follow them. It, it doesn't make sense. The Bible is very clear that we must obey God because if we sin, we are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Don't try to twist scripture so you can continue in a lifestyle of sin. You can stop and you need to obey God. You can't, as I've been starting to say, eat the fruit and not die. Like the lie in the garden, where he was like, you, you, you can eat this fruit and you won't die. You can disobey God's command and he's not going to do anything about it. There's going to be no consequence. No, there is going to be a consequence for your sin. The wages of sin is death. Your lifestyle of sin will lead to death. An eternal death in hell. So turn to Jesus, turn from your sins, come to Christ. He's willing to forgive if you will confess and forsake your sins.